the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a great one on tap between the Tennessee Titans and the New York Jets. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, we have a damp and rainy afternoon in the tri-state area as EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to MetLife Stadium in the Garden State of New Jersey. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Tennessee Titans and the New York Jets. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Jets ball club. They come in on a pretty good roll here, winners of three straight. Meanwhile, for the visiting Titans, they were losers their last time out. They're gonna try to get back in the win column, but obviously they're gonna have to do that in a hostile environment. And sometimes it actually works to your advantage. Now you've gotta to band together your team, the us against the world mentality. Let's see if they can use it and get a victory. season already in the rear view mirror and off we go in week five on EA Sports. This will be fielded at the six. Then he'll take this across the 25, couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. So here are the Titans now for their first drive. Ryan Tannehill will be orchestrating the offense, the top 10 pick back in 2012. And I'll bet right now it's just one thought in his mind. Win, win the game. game. Oh, yeah. yeah, without a doubt. He played pretty well. I mean, he didn't turn over the ball in terms of interceptions, no, right? two touchdown passes two last touchdown week. Two touchdown passes, but when your team doesn't win, that's just hollow. And the best quarterbacks don't care about anything but whether or not their team won. Ready, set. Pilot, 64, weak. They'll fake the handoff. Now Tannehill. Rush coming, and he's taken down. A bad start there. A big loss on their first play from scrimmage. It's second down. And the job becomes twice as difficult now. After the sack, it's second and 20. Now Tannehill. Throw left side complete. That's Hart. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. He finds McKinnon complete. There's an example of good situational football being played by a defense. They understood where the third down play was, the down and distance, and made sure that they didn't get anywhere near that, bringing up fourth down. Yeah, they were sniffing out that marker, didn't want to let him get close to there, and now a likely three and out to start. Yeah, I love the way they rallied to the football and got to him and made sure they didn't give up much run after catch. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. And leading them out there, we get a look at their 6-3 quarterback. I read something prepping for this game that he said prior to, and I think he really said it a few months ago, where he talked about he wants to have the type of season that at the end, he's buying gifts for all the guys who have helped him along the way. And I know that the team wants to hold him to that and really get into his wallet. But that's what good leadership gives you. You know, at the end of the season, because you've done a great job, QB, he's usually the guy who springs for the good stuff. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product Go out ahead. on the field. And, and when stop. they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. 
Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. That's complete to John Ross. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. They face a third and four after that last completion gets him six. Let's go, D. They're going to look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. On first down, he'll drop to throw. On the left side, it's complete. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. A jet first down, 18 big yards that time. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, step it back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. A look at the defensive starters for Tennessee. Kenny Vaccaro is an excellent player. Can cover in the slot, but his best attributes, tackling people and rushing the quarterback. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Now back to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. They're going to have to do something with him. He was so sensational last week, over 200 yards. AFC Offensive Player of the Week, what do you do? You, you hold him? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good start as long as you can get away with it. Otherwise, just giving up penalties and free plays for the offense. But I think you've got to do a combination of things. Chip at his timing at the line of scrimmage, have extra people in the territory for him. You've got to do everything and change it up from snap to snap. Had a chance to maybe limit them to three if they could have gotten that stop there, but a new set of downs. And with a new set of downs, you got to take the mentality of the whole thing. Right now, everyone's looking at the offense and saying they've got the advantage. The best defenses just say, okay, new set of downs gives us another chance to make a play ourselves and maybe change things up. Now a play fake here on first down. He'll find his running back here, Richard, and he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. A gain of eight there on the eighth play of the drive. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him the football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. I got you. I got you. They'll go to the air here on third and two. Got a man, it's Ross, complete. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Go on, go on. Looking to throw. And this will be caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. John Ross, his second touchdown on the season as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. A good hold in these wet conditions. The point after is up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it's finished off by a New York Jets touchdown. This will be fielded at the 6. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. it's more important to get it to the right. And oh, his first carry, he loses the football. And it's scooped up by the Jets. Fighting his way.
goes right in for a Jets touchdown. Even the great ones, some of the best, they're not immune to the fumble, and here it really hurts them. If the ball gets away from any runner's body, that's when the defense pokes at it, swipes at it, swats at it, and finds a way to create a big play for themselves. Rosas now to add the PAT. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And we spotlight Derrick Henry now. Looking for a bounce back. Had the fumble a moment ago that went for a touchdown the other direction. See if he can get back in rhythm. And you have to be very careful about having too quick of a hook with really good players. I did a guy's game in high school where he fumbled three times in the first quarter. Finished with over 300 yards on the night. Later ended up in the NFL. If you've got a talented back, give it back to him. And that's incomplete. Here are the starters defensively for the Jets. We know they're going to be tough to throw on top three in the NFL defending the pass. And this is where we talk game inside the game. Top five passing offense versus top five passing defense. I wouldn't be surprised defensively if they change up coverages a bit more than usual to try and combat what they expect to see. After the incompletion here now, third and two. And this is going to be incomplete. That makes them now 0 for 2 here in the first quarter on third down conversions. And now they'll look to their defense because they need them to step up so they don't fall further behind here in the early going. And problem spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. The Jets offensive unit ready to get going here. They've got things going their way early. 14-0 lead and the football. First and 10 on first down. Phillips. That's it, baby. These are his numbers from last week's contest. And Charles, how do you think he ran the football? I thought he definitely had his moments. I did think that they could have utilized him a little bit better, and I'm definitely going to keep an eye on him to see how they're going to use him this week. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Two yards, good enough for a first. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Now a throw for the left sideline, and he's got it. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That's the number two receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage. And tell you what, a few more plays like that, he won't be number two for long. But that's what often happens when you have competitors running around the field. These guys know where they stand in relationship to yardage, totals, numbers, the whole deal. And let's face it, all of them, they all want to be number one. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard, your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Ten yards is the pickup, good enough for a Jet first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. They'll run on first down. Phillips, and give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. Let's go. Hey, 14-0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports.
The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. A 14-yard gain there as they look to improve this 14-point lead. I'd have to say they're feeling like they are in rhythm right now. Things are in sync, aren't they? Team's winning, got a nice little margin on the scoreboard, completing some passes, and they just completed another one for a first down there to the tight end. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. And again this time to the tailback. A nice run there as he picks up six. It's going to be third and goal now. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. No gain on the play, and what to do now on fourth and goal? Defense didn't budge on third down. Now what are we going to see on fourth? We are soon to find out, but does this feel like old school football or what? Oh, right? yeah. This is an old-fashioned goal line stand. I know what I would call on offense. I would go for it. Now, got a man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jets. From a yard out. And the Jets will extend their lead. Big fourth down conversion for the score and the defense. That is a tough pill to swallow. Big time for them. How about them just deciding to go for it on fourth down? And, oh, okay, forget the field goal, because that looked like an easy three points. Yeah, you might have had a defensive breakdown in there, but they pressed the issue and found a way to get it into the end zone. Give them big credit for that. Derrick Henry trots back out there and gets ready to go. You can count his carries on one finger. They've only given him the rock one time, Charles. What gives? So we can't draw any conclusions just yet. He has to touch the ball multiple times in order to get into a rhythm and have a chance to have success. You know who else gets into a rhythm? The offensive line. They feel better about what they're doing when they know they've had multiple opportunities to get it done. Yeah, well, the conclusion we can draw so far, they're losing here in the second quarter. Let's see if they change tunes. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They have not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. On second down, here's Henry. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Now it's Tannehill. And he's got a man, Corey Davis. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets, 35. A great job pulling that one in from a guy, as we know, who can really blaze. He's got a lot of speed. And that speed can work for him so many different ways. Sometimes he just takes off and goes and just runs past people. Sometimes you get people to back off so far that you can catch everything underneath. But still, at some point in the game, you probably have to make some contested catches, right? Sometimes you have to go up and beat a defender for the football. He has that in his arsenal as well. Showed it right there. On second down now. It's Henry. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say. Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? Now defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Open man is Jacoby Myers. He's got it. First catch for him on the afternoon, and it results in a first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Here we go. 
This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Derek Henry. They'll get it inside the red zone, but only for a couple down to the 19. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these fans make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is well over. Under pressure, and he's going to go down. Tannehill sacked. The defensive end, Daniil Hunter, drops him. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Daniil Hunter able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Brandon, what I remember most about playing with guys who knew how to rush the passer, they would just tell you, just cover people for me, just long enough for me to get there. And that's exactly what happened on that play. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short, no good, and this score will stay right where it is. Now, if this was a clear day in September, I'd say this is well within his range. I feel very confident about this kick, but... Let's be honest about it. In these elements, the difficulty level gets ratcheted up by at least a factor of five. So here are the Jets now to take over. They're on a three-game winning streak and right now looking good in this one as well. Good field position to start the drive after the missed field goal. Here's first down from the 42. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Open man is Ross complete. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now a handoff here to his running back. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And he will find his man on the outside. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. Now a quick throw as that's complete on the hitch route. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Ten yards is the pickup. Good enough for a Jet first down. This quarterback now... Just one misfire so far after that last completion. 15 of 16. It's first down. And he's caught right at the 10-yard line. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. One of the feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and this will be caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. From eight yards out, and the Jets will extend their lead. And remember, partner, that's a rookie quarterback back there. Apparently, he's getting the hang of this NFL thing pretty quickly. At three touchdown passes. You're right, he looks comfortable. What are they doing, anything in particular? Well, they keep talking about making sure they're giving him plays that fit his talents and also maybe shrinking the playbook a little bit. They did tell us that. Bottom line, he's really good. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. 
The Titans three, offense set three, to begin three, the drive. Three. Typically down to the first half, I might say, oh, you at least need a field goal out of this drive, <laughs> but they're down to the point where they need a touchdown, don't they? Yeah, normally you know me. I mean, you've been around me for a while now, right? Unfortunately. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. But normally I'm the one pr uh, preaching patience. Yeah. You know, take your time. First half, you still got a chance. I think they're out of patience here. This has to be a drive that gets a touchdown. So if you're the play caller, you're going to that portion of the sheet that says big time plays, specials, anything you can use to get yourself back into it. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Tannehill looking for his running back and he's got him. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. It's caught. Humphreys. Well, they try to swing it on left into the flat, complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Here's Tannehill. He gets it to Brown. Good play. Then he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Give him 16 yards there, a Tennessee first down. Tannehill on the offense with a first and 10. And he's hit on all five of his pass attempts on this drive so far. And he's taken down, trying to do a little too much, getting outside of the pocket, and it results in a sack. Quinnen Williams. Coming right up the gut, gets in there for a loss of nine. So we've come to halftime after a very one-sided beginning to this one. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. More from you two in just a bit. But first, let's get everybody caught up with what's going on around the NFL here in week five. We'll begin out in Houston. And it's the Patriots leading that one in the second quarter. Josh Dotson, a touchdown reception. From there, we head over to Hotlanta to check out the Falcons at home at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And they have the lead in that one over the visiting Minnesota Vikings. Two touchdown passes there for the former MVP, Matt Ryan. Finally, let's get down to Miami to see what's going on with the Dolphins. And they were victorious in that one over the visiting Indianapolis Colts. 28-7, your final score. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half for the answer? We turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Come on, And New York set to take the field. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Four yards the pickup, first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Back to throw here. Got a man open, it's Ross. A gain of four last play, they double that here and get eight. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. And he'll give it here to his running back. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. Brandon, at some point, these defenders absolutely have to say... We've just got to make a stand. We've had enough of this. Giving up a lot of points in this game, but looked better on that play. 
They'll look to throw here. He's going to have the hook up to Ross. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Now the offense is not leaving the field. They're going to stay out and go for it on fourth and three. They'll set up to throw. And he will find his man on the end route. Complete. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. That's good for a Jet first down, a gain of 13. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. Bravo! They'll drop the throw. It's complete to Chris Conley. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. That's good for a Jet first down, a gain of 13. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. They yeah, have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. Here's a quick hitch route and the throw complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. And to give this time to the tailback. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. The three red zone trips, three touchdowns so far. They'll look for a fourth on second and goal. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. That gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Rashard. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? They'll set up a throw. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. There for the sack, Everson Griffin. They've been moving the ball well offensively, really getting into a groove. Last play, pass completion. Now, finally, the defense gets there. And you have to find a way to disrupt their rhythm. Do you do it with coverage, or do you do it with pressure? They elected to go with pressure, and it was the right call. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field, but they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half, other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk of play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And that will be incomplete. The linebacker, C.J. Mosley, there in coverage. Another drive comes and goes, still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. 
And this will be taken at the 13. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the Jets will take over first and 10. And New York set to take the field. And last time they were able to churn some clock. They got the field goal, added on to their lead. But that was a drive that was so long, it should have ended in a touchdown. You know that's how they felt. And we'll both be headed to the airport after the game. But we probably should go to the post-game press conference because someone's going to ask the head coach about this drive. And he's going to profess that he was happy to get points. And we know that's not true. Okay, after this type of a drive, not getting a touchdown, a huge disappointment. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now the second down throw on target. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Got an extra defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because... They handed it to him. That was way too easy. Leo, Just looked like Leo. absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have a few men in the box there. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 17 yards for the Jets there as they've got themselves a first down. And he's over 100 yards now after that last catch. Already, of course, leading the NFL in receiving yardage. So he's done nothing at all to hurt his cause to stay in that spot. But I've been so impressed with how he's gotten it done. Body control, route running. How about the way he competes for the football at the end of the play? Looking for more there on first down, but this throw down field incomplete. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. And he'll give it here to his running back. Only a yard of the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. The Jets on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and nine. Back now here on EA Sports. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Keep it up, guys. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 13-yard line. Well, there's your leading receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage, putting on another clinic well over 100 yards. Are we taking notes? We should be, right? Because I'm going to go back and watch this tape and really enjoy what I'm seeing, the route running, competing for the football, just breaking down a defense. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Phillips, and he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. Protein spill. He's checking crap. Cut. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Come on, set. Ten Lobo. Hey, eat, 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 eat. I'm coming. Get it. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. On second down, 
It's Phillips, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. A great effort there. His second touchdown on the season as his guys continue to pour it on. So another score there. Often you talk about the three phases of the game, defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership that <laughs> as he tries to negotiate a new contract off of this win. So they are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. The Titans offense now, they get set to head back out here. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. you got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Now Tannehill. He finds McKinnon, complete. Four yards, the pickup, first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Tannehill on first down. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Again, Tannehill completes it to Davis. Oh, Davis lost it. It's loose. And it's scooped up by the Jets. And his guys are going to get the football at their own 47-yard line. Okay, this isn't one where you want to take the game tape and hold it up as an example, do you? I mean, you talk about frustrating all the way through. And that last error, I think that crystallizes it, doesn't it? Absolutely. That's been representative of their entire game still being shut out. They'll get three up to midfield. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Mike's by four, Mike's by four, Mike's by four, let's go! From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. And this is incomplete. How good has he been throwing the football, though? And despite that incompletion, that's just the third time he's been off target this entire game. But Brandon, I've been on the other side of this equation, trying to defend a guy who's been this hot, and it chips away at your confidence. And when you're not confident when you're trying to defend, it makes you slower to the football, and it leads to more completions for them. A gain of eight and a first down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. On first down, Phillips. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Daquan Jones in on the tackle there. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now, we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Let's go, they have the nice cushion. <laughs> they just want to pour it on right now, still throwing the football. And I know my background says, why do you need to do this? Just go ahead and run out the clock and get a win. But as many people pointed out to me, it's a video game, man. Go ahead and put the numbers up. Sportsmanship, not an issue. Exercise those fingers. And yeah, not much to speak of there. Maybe a yard down to the 20. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Now a throw here on second down, and that's complete. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. The Jets on third down. They've had plenty of success. Eight conversions, looking for a ninth. They're up against a third and one situation. Now back to throw. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. 
Everson Griffin on the sack, taken to the fourth round back in 2010. What a steal. You and I both know we're into a whole new realm of football because we're not just looking at tendencies anymore. We're looking at analytics, and I've got to think the analytics on third and one say run the football. They're going to look to throw. And this is incomplete. The Jets try it, but the fourth down play doesn't work. And as a result, it'll be Titan football on the turnover on downs. So they were really trying to put the nail in the coffin there already with this lead here in the fourth, but they didn't get it. Guaranteed, it's not going to be a fun handshake in the postgame, right? <laughs> uh, you just know that there's going to be some bad blood there. And I know if we go to the postgame press conferences, the, the winning coach, you know what he's going to say, why he did it? We need the points, okay? Because you never know at the end of the year if points are going to come into the tiebreaker if we're trying to get into the playoffs. That's always the standard justification. That catch good for five. It's third down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Tannehill. A battle for it, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 40, and they will set up shop in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. So many times we end a game, and as we're recapping it, we're talking about what offenses did and how they won the game. Let's flip this one over. The defense, they frustrated the offense the entire ball game. That's why they're walking out of here with a victory. And they're going to love to walk out of here with that as their final act, that interception. Good way for them to end it. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. They'll keep it on the ground. Phillips. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. He'll look to throw. Open man is Ross complete. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. So it's a victory here for the New York Jets. And I tell you what, Charles, this might be about as good as it gets. They were incredible. Yeah, offense was in fine form. The defense threw the shutout at them. I think they worked in concert together. What I like about the offense was they held the ball pretty well. You know, time of possession, exactly what they were looking for in this one. And that helped out their defense. Didn't have to be out there the entire time. So when you do that and you're out there fresh playing, off a little extra spring in your step, and it showed up in this one. They had a ton of spring in their step. Impressive victory. So for the Jets, they boost their record up to a strong 4-1. and one. And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for Tennessee, they drop below 500 to 2-3 and three with a loss. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.